So welcome back to another GameStop episode and I have a few things here I picked up. I have a few things I got for my birthday and a few things I got months ago that I wanted to show today. First up is a game that you're gonna go, I cannot believe you haven't played this game. And I'm the first to admit I have not played this game. But that is going to change very very soon. I have heard nothing but incredible things about this game and you're gonna murder me. I know it, but please understand, I have the game now. That is Shovel Knight. I really was waiting for a, a physical copy. I was so excited to get a physical copy, finally. And this was hard to find in Canada, and I finally tracked one down, and I'm like, I am going to play this game. And what I was thinking about doing was putting it in and doing, not a let's play, but more almost like a, a first play of this game, to see my reaction of it. I'm so excited for this type of game. This is my type of game. So, yeah, so many people kept writing to me saying, have you played Shovel Knight? Have you played Shovel Knight? And I was like, yeah, I just avoided the question. I'm like, I, it is on the radar. It's something I gotta do. So expect me to play Shovel Knight in the future. I cannot wait for this one. Uh, the PS4 is getting hooked up in here. We're gonna do that. So now there's a few games I picked up here that I've been recommendations and my friend Greg has recommended he's a huge Falcom fan my friend Darren is I have quite a few friends that are huge Falcom fans and they recommended this Trails of Cold Steel yes this right here part of the Legend of Heroes uh, series and the funny thing is I had a long conversation with Greg about this series and I'm like you know I don't know a lot about the Legend of Heroes series and he's like oh well the first game was uh, on, on the Turbo Duo uh, we got over here uh, as uh, Dragon Slayer on the Turbo Graphics, and I was like, I finished that game. And he's like, Oh well, that's like the first in the series, and the, it, the the game series changes over time. But I was very fascinated about it, and I was like, God, I said I really want to go back and play Dragon Slayer on the Turbo Graphics again because I love the game so much back in the day. So uh, this is a kind of a bit of a blind buy. I don't know a lot about it, but a lot of big recommendations for this. Trails of Cold Steel. My friend Darren, who owns uh, Warp Zone Games, uh, who used to have a channel called Retroclips, he just finished this game, and I'm like, damn, I, I gotta get on this. So, uh, PS3 version here, uh, limited edition. I will be checking it out rather soon. Now, here is a game that I picked up. Again, this is this is one that I saw a Let's Play of. I saw a couple of people playing this game, and I thought, this game will be interesting. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be strange. And that is, life is strange. And here's the limited edition version of it. Now I saw this Let's Play and the game was so fucked up. And I, I, you know the big thing that surprised me the most was that it was by Square Enix. I'm like, this game is by Square Enix? Like, it's so interesting to see them go in some very different directions. And I don't know what my reaction to this game is going to be, or Kim's reaction. I kind of got it for both of us so we could try it out and see how we liked it or how strange we thought the game was because I was watching this game being played and I'm like, this, this is fucked up stuff. This is weird stuff, but it was also very intriguing at the same time. So a few new games to really try out. Adding to that list is Life is Strange. Speaking of strange, <laughs> strange pickups, this is not a strange pickup really for me. It is. In a lot of ways it is, but this is a game that I wanted to pick up for, oh god, since I was a kid and I rented it and friends of mine in the neighborhood had it and it was a great arcade game. It was, And this game was big. Let me tell you, this game was big. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Yes, of all games. This is one, and I don't want to sound like all hokey, but when he passed away, I was like, oh my god, I'm so upset that I never picked up Moonwalker because I just kind of thought the game was going to go astronomically up there in price and I didn't. I got this at a used video game store in town for a really good price. I couldn't believe it. So I just mint. That's really, really mint. And there's a lot of nostalgic memories. I remember having a Genesis and Moonwalker was like announced for it. And, and then you saw the screenshots and you're like, Holy cow, this looks this looks like a great game. Uh, if you're a Michael Jackson fan or not, it didn't really matter. The graphics were so phenomenal. And I, I get a real soft spot in my heart for Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. It's a real nostalgic type of game from the past. And 
it's kind of legendary now that it's kind of you know that Michael Jackson's passed away. It's made it more more surreal to have this as well. So now, okay, <laughs> the story of my Turbo Duo broke down quite a few years, a couple couple of years ago. I had, it would run some games, it wouldn't run others. It had so many problems, and I tried to have it fixed in the past and with mixed results. Where when I was in Ontario, I got to hang out with a, a really great guy, Jody of uh, Turbo Reproductions. And he's like, yeah, dude, just send me your, send it, send it over to me. And so my sister flies out every once in a while, so I gave it to her. She flew back to Ontario. Jody came, and he fixed this for me. He fixed this in a great way. I mean, as you know, like, the Turbo Graphics is up there as one of my favorite machines of all times. And I love my Turbo Duo here. I just absolutely love it. And he's done something so amazing with this. Look at this. Components inputs on the back it doesn't make it high definition but it gives you the best looking signal out of this so yeah i'm so blown away to i i actually i have a like a standard definition tv in the other room and i hook this in and i can i honestly i've done s video on this and s video is okay component looks like wow and i have so many as you know pc engine games and i'm like i can't wait to do some reviews on some of these games and capture footage for that, but I just want to say again, Jody did this for me months ago, and I just wanted to personally thank him once again. He he has truly made an old man happy with his Turbo Duo and giving me component video cables on there. I can't say thank you enough. Now, when I was shopping around at Christmas time for Rob a present, I went to this this really amazing toy store in uh, Vancouver here in the BC area called Toy Traders. It is humongous. I will have to do an episode uh, at this place in the future, but while I was there, I was looking for Rob some stuff, and it's so funny. I found my Link figure that I got a few years ago. I did, a, you know, it was in a new GameStop episode uh, made by the Japanese, a company called Ultra Detail Figure. Uh, man, these, these, fi and so I was looking at, I was looking at this uh, Link figure for Rob. I'm like, no, that's not quite what I want to get him. Wow, I found these guys, and this made me go, it's very rare that I, I don't buy figures anymore because I don't have any plate, I don't have any room for figures. Here's the thing, the original Mario Brothers right here. Look at that, this is the Mario here. He looks not perfect. He doesn't look like the newer versions of him look now. So finely drawn perfection, you know, this is imperfection and this is what makes it absolutely fantastic. I like the original Mario Brothers art for it, the art for it, because it didn't look Perfect. It looked hand drawn just by a fan, and ah, I love that look. And they've captured it in figure form. And here we go, Luigi's Mansion too. I just love Luigi's Mansion. I I've got a real hard on for that game. I really do. When I first played it on the GameCube, was a religious experience that didn't last too long because it's a very short game. But I just to see you know, you know Luigi with his backpack and all that. I just was like, yeah. I'm sold, and I got these figures for about $14 each. This is good, this is good stuff. So I'm taking them out of the packaging after this and I'm putting them on the shelf next to Link from Zelda 1. And I have a really nice little collection of the originals. And it was the originals that got me into these series. So very happy to grab these. Now, about three months ago, my mom and sister and my nephew went to Disney World. They took a trip to Disney World and I was like, oh wow, that, I bet that's a fantastic trip and all that. <sighs> Man, they picked me up something. This is months ago and I got it for Christmas. <laughs> they held on to it for months before they gave it to me. This is cool. I, I, as a lot of you may know, I'm a huge Star Wars toy collector. I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot. I aspire to be, but I don't, I don't. But I've been collecting episode seven figures. <sighs> this is exclusive only to Disneyland and Disney World, just to the theme parks. Uh, it's the Droid Factory. It's droids from the brand new Force Awakens uh, movie. And so I was over the moon. Man, I'm 41 years old. I'm 42 now, but I was 41. And I wake up Christmas morning and I'm like, oh, I felt like I was 10 years old again, getting these figures. I'm like, oh my God, the exclusive ones, wow. You know, <laughs> I still have that kind of feeling. 
today. There's nothing has changed and I'm I'm so stoked to get these and add these to the Star Wars Episode 7 toy collection. Really, really stoked about that. It's so fun. Now, I have a friend of mine, Carlos, and he does things when I tell him not to do it. I tell him not to send me anything for Christmas or my birthday, but he does. He does, and I, I have to thank him. Absolutely. Look at some of the things he got me here. This is insane. He knows what a huge Dead Kennedy fan I am, and he picked me up this. By Jella Biafro, a hand-signed photograph of him. Oh my god, I... I was like, Christmas morning was like... I can't believe it, I... I've been such a fan of Jella Biafro for I don't even know how many years. Probably since 1988-89, when I first discovered the Dead Kennedys music. And to have a signed picture, there's not a lot of people I like to get signed pictures of, but this is one guy I was like, oh my god. So it was a bit of a dream to get a signed picture from him. I'm like, oh my god. So got to thank Carlos for that. And he also sent me this really, really cool. Look at that. That is awesome. Kim is really getting into bead art as well, and this is a really great Ken that Carlos got me from a convention he went to. He picked this up, and uh, some magnets on the back, so it's going on the fridge after this for sure. And Carlos, man, he's just, uh, yeah, man, overdoes it. I, I thank you again, but man, it's just too much, man. He got me a copy of Ernest Klein's Armada, but of course, it couldn't just be that. No, 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 it's hand signed to me by Ernie Klein, right there, right here, signed. So again, this goes with my Ready Player One. I'm a huge fan of, of Ernie Klein. I think the guy's amazing. And Carlos, I can't say, I you know, I can't say enough, but thank you for this stuff. And you also got, okay, this is a funny story. I get a package in the mail and I'm like, what is this? And I opened it up and I, I pulled out this book and I'm like, what is this book? I, I didn't order this book. And what's going on here? It's from Fan Gamer. I'm like, I never ordered anything from Fan Gamer. And, and so, <laughs> I'm so funny. I tracked down the person who wrote the book. And I wrote to them and said, Hey, did you send me a review copy or something? Like, I don't, I never ordered this book. I'm not, I'm not unhappy with it, but I didn't order it. I was, I'm like, I don't think anybody else did order it for me. Well, I was, I, it's so funny though, the person who wrote the book, they're like, oh my god, Johnny, I watch your show. I think it's really cool, all the positive things you say about video games and stuff like that. And I was like, man, what a small world. So I was happy to be able to talk to him. But it was Andrew for my birthday. He had pre-ordered this. And when the book got released, it got automatically sent to me. And it is Legends of Localization, book one, The Legend of Zelda. Yes. So what this book is about, it comes with a few freebies from fan gamer this is this is something man for anybody who's a big zelda fan i really recommend this book it's all about the creation process of making the legend of zelda and into such exquisite details i mean it is just painstakingly done i the person who did this is just went through so much work to show you what happened the translation it's all about the translations and, uh, you know, how the game got translated and how it changed some of the ideas in it. This is a book that I'm going to sit down and really read through. I'm I'm really happy to be talking about it now. And I was like, okay, good. Now I've talked about it. Now I can go read a lot on it. But it's all about... Oh, God, look at it on the back here. It just shows you all the different guides. This is your one-stop book for The Legend of Zelda 1. And as many of you know... Zelda 1 is my favorite Zelda of all time. It is because it's the first one I played. It's the first uh, entry into the series. And for some reason, it captures wonder and imagination with me still to this day. I love The Legend of Zelda. And this is a book on what it took to translate it and to create the game. And a lot of the merchandise and you know guides and stuff like that with the game. It's, I highly recommend it for anybody who is interested in The Legend of Zelda. Even a little bit. Very cool book. Okay, just a couple more things here. Oh my god, Discotech, a company you gotta love, you gotta hate. And the only reason why I say that is because they love to do this once in a while. Venus Wars has come out on Blu-ray. This is an amazing thing. This is the thing that makes me extremely happy. I like the Venus Wars. I always have. I collect the comic book. Big fan, big fan of the movie. I had it on VHS back in the day. Where the problem is, is I bought the DVD, you know, Discotech released a, a high definition 
uh, remastered, I should say, DVD about a year and a half, two, two years ago. And then all of a sudden, we get the Blu-ray. So here's a little thing I'll say about Discotech. If you, they release something on DVD and you're like, oh, that's cool, I want it. Wait a little bit. They always double dip their releases. So I know they just released Street Fighter, the movie. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that, but I'm like, I'll wait for the Blu-ray. And also another one that they're releasing, I think, oh, was it Street Fighter? I know that they, they did this for sure. Uh, Ca Castle Cagliostro, they just released on Blu-ray. But just wait, Robot Carnival for sure. That's on DVD. That's gonna get uh, a high definition, you know, Blu-ray version. And I'm waiting for that. Huge fan of Robot Carnival. Gotta say, a huge fan of that from back in the day. But I love Disc Attack. I'm not bashing them. I'm just saying, if, you know, I just, I hate double dips. I really do. So I had to buy this movie twice to have the perfect version of it, which I'm finally happy that, to have. I, I recommend the movie, by the way, Venus Wars. Really good stuff. Okay, the last item. Ha, can you believe the year 2015, I bought a CD. A CD after all these years. I can't remember the last time I bought a CD. But it was for Star Wars The Force Awakens. Right here, and I'll show it to you guys here. A very underappreciated soundtrack. I remember once the movie came out, everybody was talking about it and saying, yeah, the soundtrack didn't live up to my expectations. It was okay, it was very subdued. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like the other movies. I disagree, I really do. And so here's the deal, I, the movie came out the night before I was able to find a copy of the soundtrack online and I listened to all the music. And so I heard the music before I saw the movie and I was like, wow. You know, and I wanted to support the physical release. Not that Disney needs it, but I wanted to do it anyways, you know, to support John Williams' music. But people said it was, oh, it's a very subdued soundtrack, stuff like that. I think the music is phenomenal. I really do. Ray's theme, you know, is an incredible theme. If you haven't seen the movie, stop watching. I may talk about spoilers here. So it's been a couple a month or so, two months now since the movie's been out. But if you don't want any spoilers, hit the road, you know, no problem. I get it. I wouldn't want to be spoiled either. But uh, the Jedi, you know, the, the steps, uh, music at the end. Also, when Ray is in the Millennium Falcon, and at the end of the movie, and she takes off, oh my god, to go and find Luke Skywalker. Blows my mind, that music. I don't know, it's so powerful, and it feels like Star Wars. That was one of the scenes in The Force Awakens that really felt like Star Wars, like really like Star Wars. I was like, oh, this is, she's with Chewie and that music, and she leads a planet, and oh yeah, I love that scene. But how is it, the music is great, and you know it's funny, the last Star Wars album I bought was uh, the Phantom Menace and I listen to the people can say whatever they want about the Phantom Menace It's not a fantastic movie. We know that but nobody can deny that the music in the Phantom Menace is godlike It's fan if you just listen to the album without seeing the movie the music is unbelievable uh, Phantom Menace. Oh my god duel of the fates There's too much great music in there. Where does this fit in like I really hold this up high Is it as high as past Star Wars movies? No, but it's really, really good, and I can't wait to have this in my car and listen to it uh, a lot of times. It's funny, The Phantom Menace, as I say, I listened to that soundtrack so much that the CD case eventually broke in like 10 spots, and now I just have a CD in a sleeve for the original uh, thing that I got back in 1999. So, yeah, anyways, guys, that's some of the stuff that I picked up this month and last month, presents, birthdays, all sorts of crazy things. So anyways, guys, until next time.